Gauteng's Cooperative Governance, MEC Labarang Maile, has placed the Mfuleni municipality under administration. He says a previous intervention hasn't produced the desired outcome. This is the, not the only headache he's facing. The High Court in Pretoria has ruled in favor of the Democratic Alliance in a battle over the dissolution of the Tswane City Council. The MEC joins me for more on both these stories. MEC, good evening. It's a pleasure to have you on News at Prime. Let's begin with the situation in Tswane. It looks like the courts simply don't agree with you that the decision there should not have been taken in the first place. Good evening and thanks for having me. Uh, it's not the courts, it's the Pretoria High Court. Uh, and you know that there is a Supreme Court of Appeal and there's also Constitutional Court. And you will uh, appreciate that the Constitutional Court has already agreed to hear our uh, appeal. We have appealed the matter and it has went to the, this, with the Constitutional Court and they have given us the date of the 10th of September to hear the matter. What has been uh, decided today is on what is called Section 18.3. And that Section 18.3 simply means uh, the DA has asked the same court that has decided to uh, enforce the, the, the judgment. So that's what has, 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 has happened. And we have since said there is then Section 18.4 meaning you can go to the Supreme Court of Appeal, which is the higher court. So, so far, it's only the high court that has not uh, agreed with our decision. So it will not be appropriate to say the courts. So one court, and we respect uh, the decision. Hence, we think, uh, uh, despite the fact that the, um, the, 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 the court um, has added, um, we, we still respect the decision and we are appealing it uh, with the higher court, uh, which is the Supreme Court of Appeal. And it must be clear what is going to the Supreme Court of Appeal is whether the judgment must be enforced immediately or not. Mm -hmm. And what is, is with the Constitutional Court, it's whether the decision to dissolve it's correct or not. Of course, part of what this does is that it does leave the state of affairs in Swane, regardless of whatever administrators have been put in place in the interim, it leaves the state of affairs there in a state of flux, which is not great for a municipality, especially a metro, uh, the size of Swane. Yes, and that's why we, we are saying, whilst the appeal is continuing, let's leave the administrators to do their work, because they've done a good job since they've been there. I mean, even in the uh, uh, court papers, they were able to demonstrate the work uh, that they have done. And we are saying in the best interest of the citizens of Swani, let them continue doing the work, and then the Constitutional Court will bring finality to the matter um, uh, in September on whether the decision is correct or wrong. It's still some time yet before we get to September. Are you saying that there has been absolutely no way for all the parties that are involved in Swane to resolve this matter outside of the court? Because it really is a political issue that the courts now have to decide on. And, and in the process, uh, there's some uh, constitutional um, implications uh, or in, uh, or matters that needs interpretation. That's why it must go to the Constitutional Court. For instance, in the Eastern Cape, a, 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 a court of a similar stature, a high court, has taken a decision forcing a provincial government to dissolve Makana municipality. In how taking a court of a similar stature takes a decision saying, no, we shouldn't do that. So somebody has to decide about that, because otherwise these issues will be with us uh, um, uh, beyond uh, uh, for a long time. We are acting as a provincial government. So as to the political parties, they, I'm sure they can speak for themselves. But we are looking at what the law says, what the constitution requires of us to do. And we are also acting in the best interest of the uh, service delivery in the people of Swan because we've got a constitutional obligation. So if there are gray areas in the uh, judgments which might impede um, 
uh, or, or make it difficult for us to do our work, we must definitely. But but, but uh, is it not ultimately? Is it not ultimately about a showdown between yourselves and, in particular, being representatives of the DA of the ANC and the DA? That um, there now seems to be um, motive for the parties to show each other up. Well, I'm MEC for cooperative governance uh, in Gauteng, um, mandated by the Executive Council. And in terms of the Constitution, our um, statutory obligations are clear in terms of what we must do. We must play oversight role on a municipality. Um, we, we have intervened in many municipalities. Swan is not an exception. It's not for the first time. It's not special. Uh, um, we have intervened in Mfuleni, we have uh, intervened um, in other municipalities. So I, I don't want to be dragged into politics. Uh, if you want me to come and speak uh, as an ANC representative, ask the ANC to send me. I'll come and speak as a representative. But now uh, it would be irresponsible as well for me to speak um, on behalf of a political party. When um, um, I've been invited um, in, in this uh, platform as an MEC responsible for cooperative governance. So I'm giving you the official position of the provincial government that uh, in line with the law, in terms of how we understand it, we think this is what uh, uh, is um, uh, best for the municipality. If the court says we are wrong, we will accept uh, that because we... Uh, we are in a constitutional democracy and we are not above the law. But if we don't agree with the court, like in this case, we will go to a higher court, which is what we are doing, and it's as simple as that. Sure. The and, other and, and, matters... And, sure. And in as much as, 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 as I take what you're saying, there have been many instances where the lines between party and, and state have been blurred. And so in this instance, do you not think that the situation lends itself to that? Well, I hope you ask me the same when it comes to Mfulen, because we are intervening there as well. Sure, sure. So you have We're to, about you have to get to into it now, there. sure. Yeah, so, so what I'm saying to you is that, no, we are acting as a provincial government in line with how we understand our responsibilities and our obligations as a provincial government. And we're going to court because there is a contestation um, of uh, our understanding. And uh, the court is the final arbiter when it comes to the interpretation uh, of the laws. And we uh, implement laws. Um, the, 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 the legislatures uh, 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 create laws. Um, and so that, 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 that is clear. So in this case, we are seeking that uh, uh, interpretation from the, both the Supreme Court of Appeal on the enforcement and from the Constitutional Court on the dissolution. Sure. Now, let's get into Mfuleni then. We know that that municipality has been struggling for some time. In fact, when we look at its debt levels, uh, they've been soaring. Uh, speak to us about your intervention there and uh, putting that municipality under administration, I believe. Well, this in, uh, intervention has been there since 2018 before we came. But because... Uh, as you know, there was election last. Uh, there were elections in 2019. I think um, th th there was a lapse in terms of um, uh, our, our our intervention, and it was also not done uh, right because the person who was supposed to be the administrator ended up being an acting city manager, and I think there were many other uh, uh, challenges. The, 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 there was uh, some progress made, but it's not enough, and we think that. Uh, we have to, um, fortunately, learning on the three months we have um, spent in Swan in terms of how the model we've introduced of uh, intervention and how we worked with the administrator and his team. We think if we replicate it there in Mfulen, we can see uh, some results. So this is the continuation of that um, intervention of uh, 2018. We want to bring it to finality. We want to make sure that by the time the elections come, uh, there is stability in the municipality. The municipality, at least, uh, uh, is financially viable and it can provide services to the citizens. Sure. How would you describe the state of service delivery currently in Mfulen? 
Well, it's, it's uneven um, and it's uh, not satisfactory. Um, for instance, some of the issues are historic. If you look at the potholes, uh, they've been there, and, and these are some of the reasons why we are saying uh, we have to uh, intervene. Uh, there are other issues which um, are beyond the municipality. Um, for instance, the sewer uh, scheme uh, or the sewer challenges, which uh, national and provincial government have already intervened. You will know that uh, the Minister of Water and Sanitation had announced, I think, with Deputy President, about six billion uh, multi-year uh, project that is going to be enrolled by national uh, government. So there are issues that uh, are beyond the municipality, but there are issues that are directly related to the municipality. And we think that um, uh, it has to be capacitated to be able to deal with those issues. And of course, some have described the state of service delivery there as having completely collapsed. You're also sitting with a high debt bill uh, where service providers in Mpuleni uh, sometimes have not been paid their big outstanding amounts to them. Speak to us about how that in particular is going to be addressed. Well, the problem is systematic and it has to be uh, tackled as such. Um, you also, and it's a, it's a historical problem. Um, it, it has um, uh, different um, uh, elements to it, and you also need uh, to tackle it uh, com comprehensively. And uh, as I've said, there are issues that will require the municipality on its own to act, but there are those that will need us as the province and national government. Sure, sure. Uh, but, but, but will Impulini be given money to can, pay can these service can, providers? Can I finish? Sure, I'm and just, then, we're quickly running out of time, so I'm just trying to push the conversation what, along. Okay, what about service providers? Will they be given money to pay their service providers? No, no, mm -hmm. no. We will never give any municipality money to uh, pay service providers. They have a responsibility to generate their revenue. Mm -hmm. We are going to come in and help them put systems in place and ensure that they raise the money and they prioritize uh, properly and pay for the uh, debt that they have uh, incurred over uh, many, many years. So they will also have to make uh, tough choices. And those tough choices must not um, affect uh, quality service delivery. That's our standpoint. We're not giving anybody money. How soon before you hear back from the administrators on what exactly needs to be done to fix that municipality? Well, on Monday we are meeting, I'm meeting with them. Uh, the same as uh, Twani, uh, I meet them on a weekly basis to receive a report. We don't put administrators and leave them on their own. Uh, we work with them closely so that we are able to uh, understand as and when there are issues and we can be able to tackle them uh, immediately. So I will be working with that team uh, on behalf of the provincial government on a weekly basis receiving reports.